Hey guys, welcome to my desk tour video. You guys have been asking for this video for the longest and I'm happy to finally give you an in-depth review of my desk as well as show you my wall prints. I don't want to make this intro too long so quickly be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Now let's begin this desk tour. So starting off the desk tour with the tech that I have on my desk, my personal laptop is the 14 inch MacBook Pro. I got it in space gray, it has 512 gigabytes and an M1 chip. I have another laptop that I use for programming. You guys have seen it in my study vlogs a few times and it's the 15 inch Dell Inspiron 15. It's a Windows laptop and I use it because the software that my professor uses is Windows. He will not accommodate to Mac OS students so I use that for programming courses. Because it's an older model, I don't really recommend recommend this because its services have expired, but it's good for what I need it for. Besides, I prefer my MacBook anyway. Moving on to my keyboard and mouse. This is the Apple Magic Keyboard and for continuity I also bought the Apple Magic Mouse. I pair them both to my MacBook using Bluetooth and the reason why I have a keyboard is so that I can easily use my monitor. Instead of reaching over to my laptop, I find it best to have a separate keyboard and mouse. I know I can move the laptop closer so I can use its keyboard, but when I do that it obstructs my view of the monitor so I prefer having just a separate keyboard to bring closer and then a mouse right here to just quickly use. I know it's a first world problem and it's really not that deep but that's why I bought a keyboard and mouse. And the reason why I have my keyboard on top of this journal which is my morning journal or journal pages if you will but the reason why I have it on there is because it as itself the keyboard lies really flat on the table and so I just have it on here to elevate it and give it some height for my wrist so that it's easier to type with. And very quickly you guys wanted to know what monitor I use and it's a Dell LED monitor. It's 24 inches diagonally and I definitely recommend this for not only school but for editing, creating, etc. It turns up to 270 degrees which is really cool and I sometimes rotate it to 90 degrees to program since it lets me see longer code without needing to scroll. But in general I find that having a monitor monitor is super beneficial because it allows me to have more tabs across the two screens. And for school, I like having the PowerPoints on my laptop and I'll watch the lecture video on the bigger monitor. Or if there's no lecture video, I'll put the lecture slides on the bigger monitor and I'll put like music or a video essay on my laptop. And I connect my monitor using this adapter that I got off of Amazon. I'll link it in the description box below. Moving on to the newest addition to my desk. It's easily my favorite thing on here. It's the Devoom speaker. I've been having my eye on this for a couple of years now and I finally bit the bullet because for some reason there was a super cheap sale on it and it's way better than I expected. In addition to it being a speaker it also displays super cute pixel art. The buttons are also super clicky and you can play different games on here. My mom said it reminds her of an Atari and I can totally see the inspiration. It's definitely giving mini 90s arcade and here's a little clip of how it sounds. The last piece of tech that I have on my desk is my iPad, which I use mainly for school and YouTube. I have the 11 inch iPad Pro in space gray. It's 128 gigabytes with Wi-Fi. I use this to take notes, plan my week, create my thumbnails, consume media, etc. I've since switched over from my matcha green case to this case from Casetify. And again, for continuity, I got this Do Not Disturb Me duck from Sebong's Casetify line which also matches my AirPod and my phone case. So it's a really nice cohesive theme that we have going on here with my cases. And I'll link it in the description box for you guys if you're also interested. Now moving on to the desk lamp that I have. It's a touch sensitive desk lamp from Amazon. So you just tap it to turn on. I was looking for a lamp that had both day and night shades and this one actually had three. So we have pure white light, neutral white light, and a soft yellowish warm light which is what I prefer to use for late night study sessions. It also allows me to change the brightness level with five settings. This is the lowest and this is the highest. As you can see, it gets really, really bright. So I usually have it on the second to dimmest or the dimmest setting at night. And then I switch the mode to pure white light. And then I usually have it on the brightest or the second brightest setting during the day. So that's it for the first part of my desk, which mainly houses my tech. Moving on to the second part of my desk, which is this little corner right here. So starting off with my phone stand, this is something I got off of Amazon as well. I used to have a different one, but I gave that to my sister and I bought this one because I really like the back support that we have going on here. It's super soft as well as the support down here which is of the same material and I use this to elevate or lower it just so I can quickly glance at my phone and see whatever messages I need to respond to. So yeah I just have it right by my monitor and then I put my airpods right here. 
Before moving to this little back section, in addition to my AirPods, I use my Sony MX4s. I use this almost every time I study. It's really good at blocking out noise. Most of the time, I don't even use the noise canceling feature. It's really good just as is, and the battery life is also really, really good. I think it's like 30 hours of playtime. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it lasts me an entire week before I need to charge it. I usually keep it off to the side or I'll keep it on my monitor like this, and when I'm ready to study, I just grab it put it on and that's that okay so starting with the last part of my desk which is a book nook I would say starting with this plant that I'm trying to propagate this is the pothos plant that I took from downstairs we have these two columns of vines I guess like sitting right at the edge of the stairs before you walk upstairs and my mom cut a piece of it for me which is really nice of her because I wanted to have a desk plant and I think we cut it in the beginning of January this year you can see its roots coming in which when we cut it this is all we had and I've just been filling it up as high as I can so that it gets submerged in water so it can grow. I just keep it over here by my books because I think it looks the best here and I usually just put the plant leaves so that it's facing out this way. And moving on to this last plant on my desk, it's a pot of various fake succulents and the story behind it is actually really funny. My friend bought this for me as a gift is because I can't keep a plant alive to save my life. So she said she bought me fake ones so that they'll be green forever and I think it's really funny so I just keep it off to the side of my desk like this and with these two plants it really does add a lot of greenery to my desk and yeah that's why I keep it here. So moving on to this book nook area I have an array of books that I will be reading, have read, or am reading and I often change it out depending on the TBR list of the month and I hold everything up using this bookshelf that I have on this side as well as this side and it keeps everything stationary and prevents it from falling over because of the desk that I have. Because I have an iPad and I mainly take notes with my Apple Pencil, I don't really use regular writing utensils but when I did take notes using my notebook, I used the Pilot G2 pens and the Mild Liner highlighters. For the Pilot pens, I prefer to use the 0.5 millimeter size just because I think it writes really well and it's thin enough for me to write neatly with, so this is what I prefer to use. And then for the highlighter slash marker of choice, I chose to use the Zebra Mild Liners. So on one end, it's chiseled for highlighting or calligraphy, and then on the other side is a fine tip, which is really good for just writing in general. I use them every now and then, maybe for like Bible study but I don't really use them to take notes with anymore. Now moving on to the desk that I use, I've since upgraded from my regular very stationary desk to the standing desk from Vernal. It's 48 by 30 inches which is the exact same dimensions as my previous desk. I got the light walnut color with a white frame because I wanted to switch it up from the basic white desktop that I had. And Vernal also sent me an ergonomic chair to add to my setup. Before we continue, I want to give a huge thank you to Vernal for helping me transform my workspace into a dynamic and ergonomic haven and being the sponsor of today's video. There are so many benefits to having a standing desk, especially if you're looking for a healthier and more productive work environment. You guys can also upgrade your workspace by clicking the link in the description box and using my code YTBRay6 for 6% off your order. Surprisingly, this desk was super easy to assemble. It took my brother and I about 20 minutes, but we could have finished it in six if we knew what we were doing. Thanks to its frame desktop integration and slide to assembly structure, it's easily the quickest desk assembly process I've ever experienced. This standing desk also has a built-in cable tray that's super useful when managing multiple cables. It allows for the back of my desk to stay clutter-free and organized. So the first and most important feature of Vernal Standing Desk is its flexibility. With an additional height range of 58 to 123 centimeters and four convenient height presets, this desk effortlessly adapts to my preferred working positions. My normal sitting height is 31.2 centimeters, and when I'm ready to stand and stretch, I use these two buttons to raise the desk to a height of 39 centimeters. And a tip to help find your standing desk height, make sure your arms are at a slight 90 degree angle. Doing so helps with posture and it's the ideal typing height as well. 
In addition to the flexibility of the desk is also its strength. It effortlessly holds up to 160 kilograms or 352 pounds while lifting and lowering the desk. The stability of this desk is also something amazing. Thanks to its precise technology, the columns seamlessly slide into each other, providing greater support across the three sections of the column. This ensures a rock solid workspace. I also got this chair from Verna, which is an ergonomic chair, so it helps with your neck. It's made of mesh, which is super breathable, and then it has like a soft cushion right here on your back that you can easily adjust. And this is made with like a memory foam kind of material. And then on the sides, we have the handles, which go all the way up and all the way down. You lift up this kind of lever thing and it adjusts lower, higher. I like to have it on the high one. And not only do the armrest lift and lower, they turn, they shift back, move forward. And this chair also comes with a protective cover, which I prefer to keep it on, but you don't have to. And it makes it super easy to wash. So you just take the cover off, wash it, put it right back. And yeah, that's it for this ergonomic chair. I've never had one, but like, I don't think I would go back to a regular office chair, which is what I had before. Pretty tragic, not gonna go back. This is my favorite thing ever. If you guys wanna shop the Verno standing desk or the ergonomic chair, don't forget to use my link in the description box below and you can use my code YTBRay6 at checkout for 6% off your order. Thank you again Verno for sending me the most ergonomic desk setup ever. Now let's get into my wall prints. These are the only two wall prints that I have that are from Etsy. Everything else on here is from Pinterest. These two are made by Lulu Paper Cranes Art on Etsy. And it is handcrafted and I love all the attention to detail that she put in them. This one is Spirited Away. We have No Face here at the sauna with all the food that he ordered. Then we just have a picture of Howl's Moving Castle. So a fun fact about my wall prints, everything on here I have seen. So these are kind of just like mementos of the different movies and shows that I've seen. So starting with the prints like this, as you can see, I have a lot of them on here. And you can find them on Pinterest by just putting the name of the anime and then put like minimalist wall print at the end of it. So for this one, I just put Tokyo Avengers minimalist wall print and a whole bunch of different ones popped up. This is the one that I chose because it had all the cast members in it. And if you guys are interested in the wall prints that I have on my wall and would like to print out similar ones or the exact same ones that I have, I'll link my Pinterest in the description box so you guys can also print that out. But moving on to the wall prints that I have in the same style as this one, I have the Junji Ito collection. Not that good of an anime, I have to say. The books are way better and the books are normally way better. I have Horamiya, which is one of my comfort animes. I have Attack on Titan, which I haven't finished yet. I've seen High Rise Invasion, which is really good actually. I saw it with my sister. And we have a Studio Ghibli print called The Secret World of Arietti. Down here, I have another Howl's Moving Castle print. And then behind my monitor, I have the Spirited Away print in the style as well. Next, we have just screenshots of anime. We have a Crollo screenshot, which is from Hunter x Hunter. And then I have another perfect blue poster, and I have a lot of these on my wall, actually. The reason is because the poster is just really aesthetic with the blues and then the koi fish. It's just a really well done poster and I really like the movie so I have it multiple times up on here. And at the very top I have this wall print that my dad actually printed out for me. It's from the movie Bolt and it says sometimes the impossible can become possible if you're awesome. The next anime screenshot is of Killua from Hunter x Hunter. There's a lot of non-traumatic prints that are floating around on Pinterest. The reason why I chose this one is because he looks really cool and it kind of fits the dark theme that I have going on with the Junji Ito collection here. And then we have Killua here and then we have Perfect Blue at the side. I don't know, it kind of just fits the vibe of the wall prints that I have, so I went with this picture. Behind my monitor is a screenshot of Captain Levi from Attack on Titan. Next, I have another screenshot of No Face, and I just think it's really cute because of the little mouse learning to knit and then No Face knitting as well. And then to the right of this print, I have a picture of the inseparable trio from Attack on Titan. Behind my monitor and my plant, we have another Spirited Away poster. I have a lot of Spirited Away posters, I'm just realizing. And right above it, we have L from Death Note. This was actually the first anime that I saw knowing that it was anime, if that makes sense. Like I've seen anime when I was younger. I've watched Studio Ghibli when I was younger, but I didn't know it was considered anime. I just thought it was a child show. But this was the first show that I consciously knew it was called 
old anime so i really like it he's my favorite character and i just keep him on my wall here and then to the right of l we have connie and sasha and they're just goofing around they're supposed to be training but i feel like this portrays their personality and their friendship really really well and then turning the corner we have another perfect blue poster this is a really good poster actually and i feel like it encompasses the movie really well because it shows the two different sides of her i'm pretty sure this is the last poster that i have of perfect blue so you won't have to see her anymore and moving down the line we have l and misa where misa's just like goofing off and annoying l and then we have another anime screenshot of arietti from the secret world of arietti this was my favorite movie when i was younger it's based off of the borrowers and the reason why i love this movie so much is because she's a tiny human and i was obsessed with like tiny miniature versions of human things and not only as a child but also now her room was goals i've actually drawn inspiration from her room to make my own room but yeah this was my favorite studio ghibli movie growing up and then underneath it we have the cat from kiki's delivery service and then to the right of that we have a jujutsu kaisen kind of comic strip print i think it's really funny it's super chaotic we have gojo jumping on the stairs we have what seems to be a small itadori running like screaming for his life it's a really funny print so i keep it on my wall now moving on to my K-pop prints, we have a minimalist BTS poster, and this is their run poster, and we just have all seven of the members right here. And behind my monitor, I have another BTS print. This is the Magic Shop print. Above my monitor, I have a minimalist TXT poster, and this just has all the albums that they released. And then the last K-pop poster that I have is a TXT Freeze poster. And this is one of the receipt posters, which I've always thought was super clever because it has a lot of information about the album but to like the naked eye it just looks like a receipt so super clever poster i used to have another one here it was the stray kids maxident poster but that one accidentally ripped so i had to throw it out and i'll just print another one it's fine and i forgot that i had just like regular anime posters so we just have a hunter x hunter poster with all of the characters from the anime and then down here we have a jujutsu kaisen poster with all of the characters as well and it looks really cute i like the art and the color palette now moving on to just some random miscellaneous prints that I have on my wall. I have this bamboo forest that I found off of Pinterest and I printed it out because of the green palette that's going on and I've always thought this but like confirm if you think it this kind of looks like Bigfoot. I could totally be wrong but like the head the body this is Bigfoot you can tell me that it's not but like I'm gonna forever believe that it's Bigfoot and then the last wall print is this quote that says it's not a bad life it's just a bad day and I like having it here just as a reminder to not dwell on how bad a day is it will pass and that's the last print on my wall i hope i went in depth as to what my desk looks like as well as the wall prints the tech and just everything that i have on my desk and that so. concludes the end of the video guys i hope you all enjoyed don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you in the next vlog